we are talking about how to identify and avoid art cliches. You have to learn how to spot what exactly is a cliche, because I don't know that you should never use cliches. I guess a cliche is something that has been used as an identifier or a symbol of something so often that it almost makes you want to roll your eyes. Nine times out of 10, you'd want to not use the cliche. It lumps your work in with a lot of other work of the same caliber. Maybe you actually intentionally use the cliche itself and you mess with it. You can use a cliche and be aware that it's a cliche and make something kind of tongue in cheek and very aware of the fact that it is a cliche. It's usually the first most obvious idea. The cliche is the easy way out. Broken mirrors. I can definitely call out Lauren, who's the teaching artist here. It's easy to latch onto and then you have everyone doing it. Why does everybody who makes an installation at some point have to have a mirror in it? In a gallery, it's a cool setting. It's also a really easy way to just distort reality. It just becomes sort of a cheap trick. All right, Alex, did you draw some eyes? A bunch. Eyes all the time in middle school and high school. I mean, they are the windows to our soul, <laughs> Clara. You have to know as a creative, all right, I'm working with the cliche. What's up with the butterflies and birds? It's freedom. Butterflies are also beautiful. So we can be beautiful and we can fly. The butterfly is change, transformation. These are all cliches to us, but maybe someone from a different part of the world or who isn't as exposed wouldn't really consider this cliche. So it can be kind of subjective too. What what is cliche and what isn't? Screaming faces. I think I'm the queen of the screaming face. This is a super famous film still, which actually influenced Francis Bacon and his paintings later on. Oftentimes, there's no real story behind it other than, I feel angst. It's really important to note that we're bringing up famous and really lauded pieces of work. None of these are bad tools that you should avoid using, but just know that it's a very common tool. A lot of people are very quick to latch on to cliches because they are quickly understood. Why is it always long and windy and full of colors? Life's journey, the path, the travel, wandering. You get this big interior space with like a single <laughs> chair. It reads as lonely and it reads as absence. Something happens to Charles Xavier and then it's a shot of like the wheelchair and it's just empty. The black and white image that has a little touch of red in it. It packs a punch. If you ask me what like a really intense color is, I think of red, probably because of blood and heart and anger. I think it's a very particular use of text where images get labeled. I see that as when the text is doing the work that the illustration or the image should be doing. Why is the text always on the mouth? Because we are silenced and the text is speaking for us, obviously. It's always some muscly guy with gigantic pecs, a practically naked woman. She's never at the same level, height-wise. In the fantasy realm, I think things that are sexy, when it comes to the human body, things that are jarring and very appealing to the eye. Paint that has been poured, splattered, or is dripping. I think it's a way to use a material in a very quick, simple way that creates an interesting visual impact, but it doesn't have a lot of thought put into it. It's just eye candy. These images where people repeat something in order to show movement. The challenge of conveying movement in a two-dimensional non-moving image, there are only so many answers to that question. It's the dance thing. The Temptation to want to apply this to every image of an athlete or ballet dancer that's out there. This drives me insane. So I here's the thing. I that for every single one. <laughs> <laughs> this one really goes to Andy Goldsworthy. I mean, he did this and then everybody jumped on the bandwagon. It's not limited to nature. It's everything. It's pigments. It's pieces of fiber people who make pies. Some of these I personally kind of like. 
I'm into them. Alex, what do you think? I kind of want to organize my desk supplies <laughs> and my paints like this. I think that proves a point that not everybody's going to agree on what is a cliche.